Finally, on your credit card, give you an available balance of thousands of dollars. Okay. So that, that's one issue. If you have a lot of those, would the credit bureaus look at those as saying, you know what, that person can immediately take advantage of thousands of dollars on each of the cards? Correct? Yes. So if I can do that, for, theoretically, I can get myself either through loans or just buying things an awful lot of things very quickly. Correct. So if I'm a credit, or a credit, I don't know, from, so from a credit account point of view, from, from a credit report point of view, yeah. I look at that capability and say, that person um, could essentially walk off with an awful lot of stuff. Correct. So I'd be very suspect of a person who had a lot of cards with large available amounts of money that, you know, credit, available credit cards, and say that should affect their credit report. It will not negatively affect the credit report unless they're not paying the bills. Okay. But they don't care that you have five, six, ten cards? The credit bureaus, they look at payment histories, they look at uh, the ratio of debt and all that stuff. And that's, that, that actually goes a little bit beyond the scope of this program. That's, uh, you know, life is credit type of a program. And uh, there's, there's, all, there's a lot to learn there, actually. But uh, in, in the end, you know, as far as credit is concerned, you want to lock it down. Fraud alerts, cancel all those excess cards. Question in the back. Should you use a debit card or credit card? I'm a big fan of credit card versus debit card. Reason why I don't like to use a debit card is if your debit card is compromised, and it can be, even though you use a PIN, it can be compromised. If your debit card is compromised, that accesses your bank account, your cash. That's your money. Whereas if your credit card is compromised, whose money is it? The credit cards, not yours. It's their problem, not yours. Whereas if, if they access your debit card account, and in your, your bank account, and they, they liquidate your account, any checks you have written up against that account are going to balance its headaches for you and so forth. I would recommend credit cards versus debit cards. And I pay for credit cards with everything. I hardly ever pay with cash. I don't worry about credit card fraud. I don't worry about it because I check my credit card statements. And I don't worry about new cards being opened up under my name because I have a security system wrapped around my identity. Anytime someone was trying to open up a new account under my name, I get a phone call first. See how that works? Solve problem. That's what I'm here for. Questions? Yes? What's that? Well, debit cards are fine, but if you can use a credit card versus, I use a credit card. Get freaking flyer miles. <laughs> yep? How do the thief get hold of your credit card if you haven't lost it? How does, the, how does the thief get a hold of your credit card if you haven't lost it? Well, every time you use it, every time you go to the gas station, every time you go to a restaurant, every time you place an order online, every time you place an order over the phone, you could go to the supermarket, you could hand it to the clerk, they could swipe it underneath the counter on a, on a, on a device that re records that information. The supermarket's databases can be hacked. There's hundreds of different ways. But your responsibility is not to protect that card number. It's to pay attention to your statement. It's all you need to do. As long as you do that, you're in good shape. Yes? I have one question on the security system. Someone told me this, and I don't know if it was true. Uh, someone they knew had one, and they went away on vacation to Florida, and they made quite a number of transactions while they were there on that kind, and it got shut down while they were there. Did that kind of thing happen? With credit cards, the credit card companies have software that monitor your spending habits. And if there are irregular spending habits, if, for example, let's just say you were in uh, a, 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 at the mobile gas station and you, pla and you placed an order, and then two hours later, your credit card, you, you, you pumped the gas, you swiped the card, and two hours later, your credit card was used in Russia. Well, you could not have possibly got from North Reading to Russia in two hours. That's a red flag. The credit card company software picks up on those irregularities. And sometimes if you're traveling out of state, they might look at, that, look at that as an irregularity. That's the credit card companies watching out for your back. Sometimes they're a little overprotective, overzealous. Sometimes they're very effective. You just kind of have to roll with the punches with that stuff. That can happen.
That can't happen, yeah. Yes. If you have an electronic room key from a hotel, it does not have your personal information on it. It is an urban myth. There's nothing on that key. Nothing. Nothing. Ever. It's a lie. Yes. I just had that happen to me. And it, I found that if you call the bank before you go out of state or out of the country. If you call the bank before you travel, letting them know what's going on, they, they mark that in your account, it will uh, eliminate them from shutting down your account while you travel. It is good to keep in contact with the issuing bank with your credit cards, especially if you're going to be going overseas, especially if you're going to be traveling to parts of Europe that are known for a little more fraud, even in China, uh, South America, other parts of the world that are known for fraud activity. Yes? Such as you brought up about that credit card fraud, that happened to my husband and I just a year ago. We were traveling to Maryland to visit our daughter. Family. It's an inconvenience. And you have it in a gas station. That credit card. Yeah. And really, all you've got to do is pay attention to your statements. Yep. Really good question. If you have young children, should you freeze their credit? If you can, it's not easy to do so. The only way you can freeze a child's credit is if a child has credit. And under the age of 18, a child is not supposed to get credit. Actually, under the age of 15, a 15-year-old can be signed on to your credit card. Okay? If you're a parent, you have kids, you can sign your 15-year-old on to your credit card. Why would you want to do that? Well, only if you wanted to freeze your 15-year-old's your credit. Because under the age of 15, a child is not entitled to credit. They're not of any legal responsible age to do so. So they're not supposed to have a credit report to begin with. Okay? So you can't freeze someone under the age of 15 who does not have any established credit. You can't freeze their credit. That's a problem. I wish you could, but you can't. But what this company 1U does is they actually monitor your child's credit from birth. Whatever their age is, they monitor your kid's credit, making sure that uh, they, check, they check to see every six months if there's a credit report taken out. If there is, you're notified of it, bam, you go ahead and you freeze their credit. What I've been getting a lot of emails from ex-spouses whose ex opened up cards under the kid's name. A lot of hardship going on out there right now. I mean, we're in a really funny economy right now. People are desperate. You've got parents stealing kids' identities. You know, exes stealing exes' identities, like it's it's getting really ugly out there. Ugly. Yes. What about the, the elderly? Would it be the idea to have free there? Elderly, I would say if they are in the house they're gonna be in, if they are in the car they're gonna be in, or they're done driving, whatever the case may be, if they're not gonna be accessing credit for that for any reason. Credit, if they're not going to be getting new credit cards or applying for any loans, freeze that baby. Freeze it. What's that? Well, make sure that they're um, make sure that make sure that the, that they have make sure that you obtain a death certificate and make sure you submit that to all three credit bureaus when someone passes, no matter what their age is. Any other questions? Why do some stores ask for that four-digit code? It's an extra layer of veri verification. Generally, they want that over the phone or via the internet. They're making sure that you actually have that credit card in your possession, which really is a false sense of security. But in order for you to do business with some of those companies, they require it, you've got to give it to them. I am beyond my time. Uh, the uh, North Reading Police Department would like to uh, say a few final words. Uh, also, uh, we also have in the room uh, Postal Inspector Joseph McGonigal. He's going to be here to answer any questions. Uh, you'll, to, the, uh, to my left, to your right, you'll have uh, law enforcement officers from the North Reading Police Department. Also, uh, Chief Nolan will be here. I really do appreciate your time tonight. I've had a great time. I also brought some copies of my book if you're interested. It's 20 bucks a piece. This is titled The Safety Minute, Living on High Alert. 
how to take control of your personal security to prevent fraud, could save your life or protect your identity. Uh, chapter 2 is published in Good Housekeeping Magazine. I got a few copies if you're interested. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Robert, on behalf of the North Reading Police Department and the community of North Reading, I'd like to present this plaque to you as a token of our appreciation. Yeah. Can you forgive that speeding ticket for 20 years ago? <laughs> Insurance company won't. I'd like to take this moment to uh, thank Dan Jones and his training team, uh, Detective Tommy Ignacio, uh, Detective Tony Malani, Detective Mike McAuliffe, uh, Sergeant Mike Murphy, Lieutenant Kevin Brennan, and Sergeant Mike Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Uh, they're all going to be here uh, to answer those questions as formally as we break up. Also, we have a postal inspector here, Inspector McGonigal, and our postmaster, as uh, Robin mentioned. Uh, so uh, we thank you all for your attendance this evening. Uh, if you have any uh, issues or problems that can't be answered here this evening, uh, please see us as an operating police department, and we'll do our best uh, to, to handle those problems for you. <laughs> thank you, folks. Seven of them, I get out there and I do kick it around with them a little bit. That's <laughs> good. good. Enjoy. See you later. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that was very good. That yeah, was good excellent. Thank yeah, you thank you. There is a little bit more in that book. There is a little yeah. more. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, no. I do if you want to call oh, me. Oh, honey, I've got the. She's, she's just.